Hello everyone, welcome to the first homework. We're going to assemble a game using pre-made objects. The game we'll be working on is a pachinko game with animals. I call it pachinimals. Let's take a look at how it's supposed to work and then we'll jump into actually working on it. Before it can actually work, you'll have to copy the project files from the this URL. You can click copy, go into your GitHub desktop or download the zip file and open it up through Unity. Once you have it open, you will be presented with this screen. It's a very much simplified version of what we saw in our preview. You'll see there's a lot of things in our hierarchy and our screen is filled up at, at the moment. We will have a UI that is controlled by this canvas. It will show you the score and this button that will control the shooting and at the angle. And then if we go to our scene, we can actually look at our level. So you can see that it's composed of a background, obstacles and end goals. The background consists of these three uh, poles that create the boundary for our game and the background image that's just an image. Obstacles is where we're going to place our balls and spinning tiles. And end goal consists of barriers, numbers, and colliders. Let's go through these real quick. First, we will have a collider. They are stored in our prefabs. It's called score collider. If we double click on it, we can actually look into here. This collider has itself and a child that's a spawn point this is where something will spawn the box collider has a collider that's triggerable so that when the score ball walks into it something will happen that something will be the end goal script executing in here you can give how much of a score uh, the ball gets for entering that specific collider and it has a prefab for the score score add is just the number that's going to be displayed when the player earns points. Let's go back here. And finally, we have an audio that will play a score sound when the player scores a point. Next, we have these walls. The walls are just sprite renderers with box colliders. This image is actually just copied over using the tiling method. If we go to simple, you will notice that it's just one box that we've been uh, copying. Going back, you can adjust the height to change how many of these boxes are in view. And you can even adjust the width to uh, show how many boxes are width wise. We're going to keep it like this. And the size of the box collider will update automatically with the image. In addition to this box, we will have a block. The block has a polygonal collider, so it makes this triangular shape. And we'll use it to accentuate the goals. Next, we have our bow. This thing has a ball collider and it has a material that makes the player bounce off of it a lot more. It has a rigid body so that it actually physically impacts it. There's an animator attached to it. When the player hits the ball, the ball does a little animation of like growing and shrinking. It has a ball bounce collider which gives the player a score and creates the little score prefab and has an audio source that gives player feedback that it got hit. Lastly, we have our spinning object. This has a sprite renderer. It's simple. It has a box collider that encapsulates it, and it has a dynamic rigid body. This one has a dynamic rigid body because we want it to be able to move around. The only thing is we only want it to spin. So we freeze its position so it doesn't move in any direction, and then when the player actually hits it, it will spin it around. There's a lot of components and other scripts you can look around in, but we will mostly be using these to create our game. We're going to create the arena we saw in the preview. So we're going to have 100 on each side, followed by a 50, and the 25 in the center. Let's do that by using the objects that are already in the scene. Right here we have the score collider. It already has 100 points, so we can do Control c Control v That creates a copy of it. 
and we can move it all the way to the end over here. We also have this mid block and this block over here. We can also copy these. So let's do that. Move them over here. Let's look at this collider somewhere around here. I'm going to get rid of this guy for now. I'm going to reverse this one. So it's on this side of the wall. I'm going to move it here. Let's just check. It's a little bit too much. Let's move it here. And that's good enough. So now we have the 100 scoring area. Now we want to have the text as well. So let's copy this vertical text and move it over here. We're halfway done. Now let's take this guy. Let's move him around here. This will be our 50 scoring point. And let's take this guy and put him around here. This will be our other 50 scoring point. Let's see. This is around too wide. This is also around too wide. Let's edit our box colliders. So we have this one big collider over here for the 25. Let's shrink this. It's going to be only in here. And then let's make two copies. We're going to put one here. Shrink this one. Make sure that this is worth 50 points. Make sure this one is worth 50 points. And then let's add the texts. We will have a horizontal text. Let's copy it and place it over here. Let's change the text in our input to make it 50. Let's make it a little smaller, like so. And let's copy it one more time, and place it in here. Let's put these blocks on the sides of the 25. And we now have our arena. We can test it out. So as you saw, there's a problem with the spawn points. We will have to adjust them. So this one has a spawn point that's over here. This has to be in here. This one has a spawn point that's supposed to be here. So we've got to move it where it belongs. This one has a spawn point that's supposed to be here, but it's here. And this one has a spawn point in the right place. So now everything will pop up correctly. Let's make sure to save it. And let's continue building our game. Now we're going to add our ball and spinners to the game. Let's start by placing one in the center over here. We're going to use the grid toggle so we can move them directly as we'd like. Uh, let's place one around here. Let's turn off this gizmo so we can see a little bit easier. We're going to create and copy it. We're going to move it 2.5 away. And we're going to create a copy and move another one 2.5 away. Then we're going to create another one and move that one 2.5 away. And then we're going to create a spinner. Likewise, we're going to zero this out. We're going to move it onto the place that it was. And we're going to move it also 2.5 away. What we can do is we can select all of these, copy them. We can move them down by 1.5. And we can move them so they're at a zigzag from each other. To replicate the way it looked in our preview, we can create one more here, place it here. We can replace this one with a spinner. And we can create one more ball to bounce off of. Lastly, we can copy these guys one more time. Move them all the way down here. Copy this one, place it here, and replace this one by another spinner. And with that, we have a game that looks like our preview. Let's test it out. Let's 
Now, one last thing I would say is you should go through all the objects you've created, uh, put them in parental objects and name them so you know which one's which when you're looking for them. So for example, this one you should rename Collider 100 left. Then you could rename this one 100 right and so on and so on. This will help you stay organized and then when you're actually trying to figure out if there's a problem with something, you can directly find that object and edit it. Make sure you save your game. Uh, feel free to experiment with what you uh, have here. Change the visuals, change the uh, buttons, maybe create another platform that will interact differently with these. Create another bounce pad or, or like a different object. You could place these blocks in the middle. You could create little slide down tunnels. The world is your oyster. Create cool stuff.